Let's take uh, the derivative of the sine of x. And this is a remake of an old video because in the other video, I, it actually took me two complete videos to, to take this derivative, so more than 10 minutes. But I feel confident that I can do it in under 10 minutes. So why not uh, streamline your education and get you to the, to the result faster? As long as it's still just as understandable. Okay, anyways. We can't take this derivative using a power rule or anything like that. We don't have a power rule for trig functions. So what we're going to have to do is resort to going back to the definition of a derivative and use the limit. The limit as the change in x approaches 0 of uh, f of x plus delta x. So this is the actual definition of a limit minus f of x or sorry, the definition of a derivative, over delta x. So how does this apply to the sine function? Well, it becomes the limit, that doesn't change as delta x approaches 0, of now it's the sine of x plus delta x minus the sine of x all over delta x now it looks like we're kind of stuck. This does not look easy to evaluate, but it turns out it's actually it's not that difficult. What we have to do is we have to use a trig identity that says the sine of, of x plus delta x, or the sine of a plus b, uh, is sine x uh, cos delta x, plus sine delta x cos x minus the sine of x. This is all over delta x. Now what I want to do is bring this minus sine and this positive sine times cos of delta x all together. So I'm going to break this up into two limits. So this will become the limit as delta x approaches 0 of sine x cos delta x minus the sine of x all over delta x plus the sine of delta x times cos x all over delta x so this is the limit of the whole thing. Now what allowed me to do that? Well, all I did was, you know, I moved this negative sine x over. Um, you could think of this as a plus minus sine x. So I used the commutative property uh, of addition. And then the sine, uh, uh, and then I just broke this up because, you know, it's a common denominator. We can, we can break these up. Okay, so moving on, just, I was just, explaining the algebra there a little bit. I don't want you to get lost in the algebra stage of things. So this is the limit of the sine of x times 1, uh, or sorry, times the cos of x, sorry, cos of delta x, minus 1, all over delta x, plus uh, again, this is the limit of the whole thing. Sine of delta x cos x over delta x. So all I did in that, in that step was factor out a sine. And now why don't I, uh, why don't I factor out an, a negative sign? You'll see what I mean. In fact, I'm going to do two steps at once. We know the limit of a sum is the sum of the limits. That's one of our limit properties. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out a negative 1 here. So this is the sine of negative sine x times 1 minus cos of delta x. So if you factor out a negative sign, this negative 1 becomes a positive 1, and this positive cos of delta x becomes a negative cos of delta x. So that's what we have there, all over delta x. And then this is plus the limit over here as delta x approaches 0 of sine of delta x 
cos x all over delta x. Okay, and then we're pretty much we're pretty much done with with uh, with the solution. Do you see it? Do you see what the answer is? Well, this is the limit as delta x approaches zero of the negative sine x, maybe this will make it more clear, times by uh, 1 minus cos of delta x all over delta x plus the limit over here as delta x approaches zero of sine, uh, let me write it like this, sine of delta x over delta x times by the cos of x. Okay, so now it should be a little bit more clear. The As delta x approaches zero, that does not affect the sine of just regular old x. There is no delta x in that term, so it doesn't affect this sine. So the, the limit really only affects this term here. And we know that limit. That's a limit we know. It's zero. So this becomes negative sine x times zero, which is zero. And then over here, the same thing. The, the delta x approaching zero does not affect the cos x here. It doesn't have any delta x's in, in it. So it only affects this term. And we also know this limit as delta x approaches zero of sine of delta x over x. That's one. So we have one times cos x. So it becomes zero plus one times cos x. Well, of course, this whole thing just simplifies to cos x. So th that's pretty cool. Using the definition of, of a derivative, uh, the, l the limit definition, we could take the derivative of, of the sine of x and it just comes out to be the cos of x. And the thing that's so cool is this was thought of thousands of years, or, or, or sorry, I should say the sine and cosine functions were defined thousands of years before the derivative uh, was even a thought. And yet, when we take the derivative of sine x, we get cos x. That is really, 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 really cool. So uh, I hope this was helpful, and maybe I'll do some more uh, trig derivatives in future videos. But use, using this as a guide, see if you can, if you can take some of the other ones, especially cos x. You should be able to take that derivative now. See you in the next video.